In Philadelphia, we have a problem with our combined sewer system in that it has a limited capacity. So when it rains, we have a lot of water coming from impervious surfaces like roads, rooftops and houses and buildings. And all that water fills up the system and eventually starts to overflow. So we have untreated water being discharged into our local rivers and streams, which is what serves as our drinking water source. So the cleaner we can keep them, the better off we're going to be. The concept of a rain barrel is pretty simple. The idea is to capture water off of your rooftop during rainstorms. The average row home rooftop size in Philadelphia is about 800 square feet. And when one inch of rain falls on that rooftop, you're going to be generating about 450 gallons of water, enough to fill eight of these rain barrels. So you're keeping that water in your barrel out of the storm sewer, so we're not having those combined sewer overflows as much. And then on a personal level, the water in your rain barrel serves as a free source of water, since this water is just coming from the sky. And there's lots of uses for the water in your rain barrel around your house. You can use it to water any vegetable gardens, trees, things like that. Any rough washing that you might need to do. You can also use the water to top off bird baths, swimming pools. What you don't want to do is use the water in your rain barrel for a drinking water source, since it's not treated. If you don't have a use for the water in your rain barrel, you're going to want to empty it about three to four days after a rainstorm, when the sewer system has that capacity available again. You want the barrel to be empty for the next time it rains, and then you can capture as much water as possible so you're still keeping that water out of the storm sewer system. Rain barrels come in lots of different sizes. They typically range from about 50 to 100 gallons in size. This particular model here is a 54 gallon rain barrel. We have two openings on the front of the barrel, a spigot and a plug, which are interchangeable. You use the spigot to empty the barrel, so you can attach a hose to that if you want or just use it to fill a watering can. And then on the top here, we have a screened intake um, and then a little lip here that catches the water so that any splash over will drain into this area. There's a coarse screen on top to keep out leaves and debris. And then there's a finer mesh screen under there and that's to keep out mosquitoes. Once the barrel fills up, the water will start coming out of this overflow hose here. So this overflow hose, we're going to want to direct wherever our downspot was going before. You're just going to want to put that back into place. So if you have a storm drain, you're going to want to put that overflow hose directed to that area. If you have a sewer riser, you're going to want to stick that overflow hose down into the sewer riser. But if you had a splash pad like we have here, we're just going to put it onto the splash pad. So the water is being directed away from the house, away from the foundation. If you have a lawn or a rain garden or something that you're directing the overflow to, that's perfect because then we're keeping that water out of the street and out of the sewer system. You probably want to have your rain barrel up on a stand. The higher you have the barrel, the faster the water will empty out of it. We don't recommend that you go much higher than 18 inches just for safety and stability. And then you're going to want to make sure that the stand is level and that the rain barrel is sitting level upon it. To set up the rain barrel, it's a pretty simple process. The idea is to put the rain barrel under your downspout and connect it so that it captures rain water. We're just going to need to cut the downspout at the appropriate height, taking into consideration the elevation of any stand, the height of the rain barrel, and any diverters that you might be using. There's lots of different diverter options available to go with your rain barrel, and all these options can be found at your local hardware store. In this case, we're just going to use these simple elbow attachments. So I'll just mark the point on the downspout there so that we know where to cut it. Cutting your downspout may sound like an intimidating or scary thing to do, but it's actually quite simple. We're just going to use a hacksaw and we're going to cut it at the part that we marked earlier when it was still attached to the house. Once you cut that piece of downspout, you're going to want to be sure to save that extra piece so that when you winterize the barrel, you can put that piece back in place. 
So once we've cut the downspout from our house, uh, what we're going to want to do is put on the attachment or the diverter that we're using. And in this case, this doesn't fit smoothly on there. So I bent in the edges so that now this attachment will fit on much easier. You can just slide it into place like that. And now it's ready to go up onto the house. To maintain your rain barrel, every month or two you're going to want to check the attachments, uh, make sure that they're still fitting securely, that they're attached to your downspout, and that the water is directed onto the barrel where you want it to go. You're also going to want to check the screen to make sure it's free of debris so that the water can actually get into the barrel. And then over time you might also notice that sediment accumulates in your barrel. And to get that out you're just going to want to remove the screw that holds the screen in place, add some water, rinse it out, and dump the barrel upside down to get the sediment out. Once winter time comes, we're going to want to think about winterizing our rain barrel. Uh, to do that, you're just going to empty the barrel. If you can store it inside, that's best if you have a garage or a basement that you can store it in. Otherwise, flip it upside down if you're going to keep it outside, uh, just to make sure no water gets in there and freezes and cracks the barrel. With this setup, we're going to want to take off these elbow connections here and then reattach that piece of downspout that we cut off earlier so that all the water from our rooftop is going uh, where it did before we put the barrel in place. The Philadelphia Water Department has a goal of being able to collect 45 million gallons of rainwater every year from residential properties. And that sounds like a lot of water, but when you consider if we had 2,000 residential homeowners out there collecting stormwater with rain barrels, that would be over 7 million gallons of water every year that were just from these rain barrels, which is a significant amount. So the more we can promote the use of rain barrels, the closer we're going to get to the volume of stormwater that we need to manage. <laughs>